Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today we're going to talk about you being the CEO of your business. How do you know when it's time to hire help? Maybe it's time to hire help long before you actually achieve or reach burnout because who wants to be in that state when you're burnt out and you're exhausted and then you're frustrated and overwhelmed and you don't want to do anything in your business. And so you fall behind, you're risking losing clients and so many other negative things that can possibly happen. So we want to try to reframe those thoughts today around hiring help. Do you have to hire someone full time and bake, break the bank to do so? Nope. Not at all. But my guest today is going to give us a lot of insight on when it's time to hire a VA, what you should be looking for in your business to know that it's time before you get burnt out so that you can be the CEO of your business and continue doing the activities that are more meaningful that will help you not only grow, but make a bigger impact and make more money. So without further ado, Helen Peterson, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm very happy that you're here. It's nice to meet you in person. Mm -hmm. And I would love for you to tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to become the entrepreneur that you are today. Yeah, I started a couple of years ago, officially in the entrepreneur space. I feel like I have always had the mindset of an entrepreneur growing up. My parents um, immigrated from Russia and we had like a family pizza business that we kind of just grew up in. And so I experienced entrepreneurship very much firsthand <laughs> growing up. And so I had a dog training business when I was little. I um, was a personal trainer in my early 20s. And as I kind of like started diving further into careers, I realized I didn't want to be stuck to the nine to five. I think what I really recognized was the way that my parents were able to show up to my track and field meets at like 3 p.m., you know, in the middle of the afternoon. And um, they were able to travel with me on the weekends if I needed to. They, they had a lot of work to do, but they also had a lot of flexibility. And that's something that like, I just continuously was thinking about, especially once I had my first baby. And to me, it was really important to have that flexibility and to not just be stuck somewhere in nine to five. Not to say that's bad if that's what you love, but I was not loving it. So <laughs> I decided to leave my medical office job when I was 39 weeks pregnant with Emery and um, my maternity leave was like researching on Instagram and on Google how to be a virtual assistant. So that's where I started was as a VA doing very basic admin tasks for online entrepreneurs. I was just making like a couple hundred dollars a month at first. It was very minimal, just starting to like, you know, dip my toes in just to see what it would look like, what it would feel like. And as I gained experience, I started doing more work as like the right hand person for pretty big CEOs. So now um, I have a couple of retainer clients that I work under who are six and seven figure entrepreneurs. They have online courses, they have um, just a lot of like training groups and do the online business thing very, very well. And I've learned a lot from them about how much they can take on versus what they're able to hand off and what they trust their team with. So that's something I'm excited to really jump into with you today, because I feel like it's very important for your business to grow. You, you have to allow a little bit of trust in other people to help you. Mm, that's so well said. And it's so, it's so very true because if you're doing all these, if, if you're stuck in the minutia, you're not able to scale, you're not able to grow. And if you're not growing and scaling, then you're not making the impact or the money that you know, God has laid on your heart to pursue through his mm -hmm. purpose that he's calling you to. So I think that's really, really well said. So let's talk about that for a little bit. When or how does someone know that it's time to hire help? I mean, I think there's a couple of ways. Two of the biggest ways that I really like to put out there for people to recognize, because they're very clear, is first off, do you have hours in your day where you are actually free to just enjoy life, to enjoy the life that you've built up. Like, do you have hours in your day where you can just leave, go on a walk, take, you know, your kids to the playground or meet up someone for coffee? What does your day-to-day -day look like? And if you feel like you're constantly playing catch up or like barely staying on top of it, that's a really great sign that you're in a position where it's time to get help. Um, the other one, if you're a numbers type of person and you like to see the numbers, 
is the financial aspect because something I've learned in this space is hitting six figures is a pretty awesome goal and a pretty awesome achievement as an online entrepreneur. You hit six figures and you're like, yes, I've done it. But can you go past the 100K? Can you make 200, 300, 400 into seven figures? And if you're not getting there, it means that you're not, you haven't expanded either your offerings enough. You have, you don't have enough going on out there. You're not putting enough content out there. Something's missing to where you're kind of just plateauing at this 100K mark, which is an awesome number. Don't let me downplay that. But if you're ready to kind of get past that and you feel like the task that, that you're doing on a day-to-day isn't like big picture, then it's time to hire someone for help as well. Mm-hmm. So what are some of those tasks that for someone that's, that's listening, that is just maybe, maybe they just started out and they're making 50 K, but they have 100 K on the horizon. And that is their next goal. What are some of those things, those tasks that they might be doing that aren't serving them in their business that they should consider hiring out? Yeah, this really depends on the business owner. Like it, it's, what do you love to do? Because for some people, they love creating social media content and spending a couple hours each day. Like, let's be real, creating a reel on Instagram takes time, you know, and creating Pinterest pins to link back to your blog posts take time. Um, but if that's something you really love, it doesn't mean you have to hire out for it. But some people, that kind of thing stresses them out, like creating content on social media, creating graphics, posting to their social media accounts stresses them out. So maybe that's something that you would hire out for if it's not something you enjoy. On the other end, something a lot more, you know, just um, with copywriting, let's say, for example, if you love writing copy for your blog posts, great, hang on to that and hand off something different. But if putting up blog posts, like you only have one going out per month because it stresses you out again, you know, like writing a blog post that takes you so long to write a blog post, that's something that you could hire out as well. Um, I actually have an assistant who does a lot of helps me with my blog on my website. And what I love to do is send her voice notes. And I say, here's the three topics that I want in this blog post. The end result of the blog post is X, Y, and Z. And she'll write it out for me. I'll go in I'll take a couple minutes, swap out some words. If it doesn't feel like my, you know, completely my voice um, or change out a bullet point or two or something like that. And then it's ready to go. And then she'll post to my website, she'll create the pins to go on Pinterest. And there's so many pieces that something I used to do that would take me around one or two hours to create the blog post from, you know, step one to step five of getting it out there, putting it on social, putting it on Pinterest, all the things. Now it only takes me a couple of minutes because she does all that back end. Um, so I think a really great place to start is to sit down and be completely honest with yourself and say, what do I do on a daily basis? What do I do on a weekly basis? And write them all out, like brain dump on a big sheet of paper, and then categorize it with what do I love to do? What do I not love to do? And then start with what you don't love, because we do things so much quicker when we enjoy it. I can, you know, do what I love very quickly, break down a couple of like, I love doing like freebie guides. And so those all write super quickly. But other things I don't totally enjoy doing. So then it takes some more time, right? So what you love doing will save you time in the long run and start with the things that you don't love. And most of the time, I like can't even think of a service that's not offered these days. There's so many very great virtual assistants who can dive into your business and who have experience from everything, but you know, from podcast editing to creating graphics in Canva to writing social media captions, like to managing your calendar or even your content calendar. Like there's so many things that VAs are very good at these days. So don't be afraid to hand that off because they might even be better at it than you. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, you know, something you said that it takes you longer to do it, but I think if you don't love something, of course, it's going to take you longer to do it because you're, you're not in the right headspace. But even more importantly is that if you don't love to do it, you're going to procrastinate and it's not going to end up getting done. And, you know, so it causes so many 
you know, back end issues in your business. You're not publishing the content or you're not doing video or you're not, you know, pitching to be on a podcast or pitching for a speaking engagement, those things that are going to get you front facing in your business versus hiding behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. I think that's really important. And I think too, you know, a VA can come in and help you with your strategy sometimes, you know, when you're like this, this is a good example. So Shay is my VA and she does all my podcasts behind the scenes and, you know, we were just on a call last week and we were talking about, okay, what do we want to do for 2023? How can we simplify our processes? How can we, you know, maybe even decrease the production cost and how can we use your time more valuable and what, how could we switch content up a little bit? And it's mm -hmm. amazing how, when two minds come together, you come up with a strategy that is more powerful than the strategy that you've been it's been working. It's been working fine. I mean, we're a top rated top 1% podcast globally, but how can we be better? Because good enough. We want to be better, best, you know, great, whatever. Ah. Um, so that's another, another good example. I like your example with the blog post too. I personally love to write my blog posts, but some people, the thought of writing just shuts them down. Yeah. And that's another great way to hand it over. Right. And like you said, then you start plateauing because you're not putting out content because you kind of just freeze and you get nervous to like start putting stuff out there if you don't enjoy it or if you don't think you're good at it. Or even again, if you're procrastinating, you know, then it's just not going to happen at all. And I think that becomes the snowball effect of like, okay, well, if this isn't going out, then what else is missing? Um, because we can repurpose content so greatly in the social media space and like between your blogs, your social, your Pinterest, there's so many ways to utilize that content. And if you don't have someone taking the social media caption that you wrote and turning it into an email campaign or turning it into a blog post and helping you kind of put that everywhere, we really do miss pieces. And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, a whole new point is like having those standard operating procedures in your business, SOPs, it's a lot easier to start them earlier in your business than much later on in your business. I've gone back into many people's businesses and had to really backtrack for them to see like, what, what are your processes? You know, like, where do you even, how do you know that you're getting everything done that you need to be getting done? And so um, having an assistant set up like Asana for you or ClickUp, some sort of uh, project management system is so, so helpful. And you'll just be able to start like breathing easier, knowing that everything's laid out. Those mm -hmm. procedures are put into place. And that way, whether it's this assistant is with you for the long haul, or you have someone else come in in the next year or two, things are set up, they're strategized. And you know that like all the ABCs of my business are taken care of. Um, and someone who cares is in my business doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's something really empowering too with hiring someone. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big investment up front, but you're now also helping someone in their lifestyle, right? Like most VAs are doing this because they love having the flexibility of not, you know, being in an office setting. And they have a couple of clients that they do work for. They have flexible hours and you're helping them build themselves, their business, their financial freedom their family, whatever that looks like for them. And you're empowering them now. And I think that's empowering to yourself as a business owner. Mm, I love that you brought that into it because I'm all about creating that ripple effect of good in the world. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the best ways we can do it, right? If we're making money, but we need help, let's not hold on to that money and be greedy. Let's help support someone else too. Now, of course, everyone has their level of income that they need in order to live and survive. I'm not discounting mm -hmm. that. But if we can support someone else and take pressure off of ourselves so we can enjoy our lives more then yes, 100%, let's do that and create that ripple effect. So when you talked earlier about, you know, your, the 100 K mark and then going beyond that 100 K mark. And it's funny, I just recently did a survey and someone in my, that I surveyed actually responded that when I asked what their goal income was for this year and then, you know, next year. And someone said, well, 40K this year, 60K next year. And in my mind, I went to, why not 100K? Mm -hmm. Like, why, why, you know, is that just what you think you can make because your mindset's holding you back? Or 
is there really and truly opportunity out there, which I fully believe there is, to move to that next level? But if you're in that mindset that, well, this is uh, most likely, you know, I've only got this many clients this year, so I'll only get this many clients next year, and I can only raise my prices so much, then you're limiting yourself. And those limiting beliefs are going to hold you back completely. And I think a lot of times when people don't hire a VA, it's because of limiting beliefs. So it all mm-hmm. ties together. I yeah. think that you can, you know, the more help you have, and it's just, it's really nice to have somebody else's eyes on something to make sure mm-hmm. that it is effective or spelled right, even, you know, it's grammar check, whatever, but it's really nice to have a pair of eyes and have someone alongside you. You know, I think there's a, in one of the, gosh, what is the Bible verse I'm thinking of? I, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but it's, I think it's an Ecclesiastes, but it's, you know, where God says there's, there's more comfort when you have someone with you. It's there's, Mm -hmm. you know, you're more secure when there's two of you together kind of thing. And it it's so true when you have that help behind the scenes. So, okay. At what is there, do you see now that I've rambled on about money, do you, do you typically see like a, a financial or an income level that people feel more comfortable to hire a VA? Is there like a, a mark, or is it primarily looking at those activities that gauges whether you hire a VA or not? You know, I think honestly, it, it varies so much because here's the thing. You could have a six figure business and only work a few hours per week and not need assistance. And that's probably mainly because you have a really good passive income source, right? Like you have an online course that does really well, and maybe you don't need that. But then maybe you have a 50K business where you just feel like there's so many little tasks because you have one-on-one clients or you have products that you're actually putting together and shipping out. And so really so much depends on your business structure. But the thing that I want to just make very clear, because I think people like to hear numbers and people always ask me, like, if I invest in a VA, what's the minimum? Like, what do I have to be paying them in order for it to like be worth it for them? And Honestly, because VAs have multiple clients, they're not relying on you solely for their full, you know, salary. It's not like you're hiring them as a full-time W-2 employee or something. You're hiring them as a 1099 contractor and you establish an hourly rate that's fair for the tasks. Very basic admin tasks, anywhere from like $25 to $30 an hour is very fair. Um, More strategic, you know, type of tasks, anywhere from $30 to $40 an hour, again, is pretty fair. And so, Starting out, you could just invest a couple hundred dollars a month initially. And it's actually a great way to start sooner than you think you need to, because now this person will only do a couple hours per week. There's not a huge onboarding process. They don't need to know every single in and out of your business. They just need to know how to create a couple of Canva graphics, how to respond to a couple of customer service email responses, you know, from your customer service doc that you have all lined up with Q&A um, responses. And then from there, your business starts to grow because now you have more time to see big picture. You have more time to take on one more client or to, um, put on like a group training program that you haven't had the opportunity to do because you haven't had time. Right. Uh So now you have a few hours per week to help grow. Then your business starts growing again. So now you're like, Hey, you're doing a great job at these two, three tasks. Let's add on another task. Let's take something off of me, put it on to you. Mm-hmm. This is how I started with my VA because um, my business isn't huge, but it definitely, I, she started with me almost two years ago and almost every six months or so I've given her a raise and she's taken on more. I've given her a raise, she's taken on more. And that's something that I have loved with our relationship because I don't have to onboard someone to do so many things now. She's already taken, you know, tasks slowly, step-by-step. And so that's, I think, a huge takeaway for anyone listening is it doesn't have to be this huge investment right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to note too. Like, and, and I can say the same thing for the team that I have, everybody started out at a, at a minimal rate, you know, like Mm -hmm. a couple of hours here, a couple of hours there, and we just built, and now that they've actually got responsibilities and, Mm -hmm. you know, bigger responsibilities. And I think that it's empowering to them, but it's empowering to the person hiring the help as well, because now you're allowing yourself to truly be the CEO of your business and not be doing the, the, 
whatever, silly little tasks that Mm -hmm. aren't going to be or get you out in front of the public to get more clients or, you know, to brainstorm new ideas on how to expand your services and everything. So Mm -hmm. I think all of that is so, 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 so important. So Helen, do you have any other like last minute tips you want to leave the listeners with in regards to when to hire a VA or what to look for in a VA? Yeah. So I think that's never like, there's obviously so many VAs out there who are willing to take on work, but you have to find someone that really meshes with you. And so I highly recommend, um, hopping on, you know, 10, 15 minute call. You don't have to call it an interview. It can just be a get to know me type of chat, because I think you'll know right off the bat, like follow your intuition, see how it feels as you start talking to someone, are they going to sit well with your business, sit well with you? Like your communication has to be on point and you have to be able to build up that trust with them. Um, I actually, I have a virtual assistant boot camp, And with that, we have a Facebook group community. So I have like almost 200 women in this Facebook group who are all amazing and who have taken my course and who are ready for, you know, work and ready to get hired. Um, A lot of them are established. Some of them are new. And so if you're like, okay, I think I'm ready to take that step. You can actually reach out to me, um, Helen at petersonvirtualassistant.com and just send me like the description of what you're looking for. I'll post it in my Facebook group. And then you at least know, like these people have been vetted to some degree. Right. And then from there, you'll get responses and you'll hop on a call and you can interview them and make sure it's someone that really fits with you. I think something that a lot of entrepreneurs do is post on their stories or, you know, in their Facebook group, I'm looking to hire and you get so many responses and you're just not even (laughs) sure what to like do with all of them. And have they had training? Do they actually know how to do the things that they're, you know, saying they know how to do? Um, And so if you're like, I don't know where to start, then um, go ahead, send me an email and we'll get your post in my Facebook group, just so at least you have like a good starting point. Oh, that's excellent. Right there. Inside scoop on who to hire and who not to hire. I love it. Um, And I I think it's really important too, when, you know, I see this all the time that you're, you have to align your values with the values of your team or your team's values have to align with your values. That's so incredibly important. And when you know that someone already trust someone, it's a lot easier to hire them. That's how I found my VA too, or how I found Shay, because we were in, um, the other person that works for me is my mom. (laughs) Kudos to my mom. (laughs) She does all our Pinterest management and she does a killer job. She's awesome. But, um, anyway, Shay, um, we met through, I was in a little mastermind and, one of the other people in the mastermind was looking to hire a VA and she interviewed two people and she loved them both. But she, and I was looking at the same time and she's like, I really loved them both. And I know they would both be incredibly awesome, but there was one little thing, reason why she, one task that the other person had the experience to do that she needed. And mm-hmm. so then I met with Shay and I was like, Oh, I love her. And it's perfect. It's like a match made in heaven. So I think it's really important when you have that, that connection with someone else who already has vetted the person, trust the person because trust is such a, you have to be able to trust the person. And I know like for me, I'm a little type a, so for me, it's like, I don't want to spend time doing follow-up. I need to trust that she's going to take care of it. And then I can relax and not have to worry about it. So Mm -hmm. having that experience, knowing that they were trained under you is a big bonus. Yeah. Um, Well, and even just ask your own entrepreneur circle, you know, like your friends who have businesses, like who helps you in your business and they might have a friend of a friend, you know, their VA's friend or someone. Cause a lot of us VAs, we have good groups. We know each other. And so if, if I can't do something, I know someone who can, you know, right. And so even just asking your other entrepreneur friends who works for you and do they know someone who would be a good fit for my business? And I think it's important, like if your business is health and wellness, make sure that person is interested in health and wellness. <laughs> if you're a big mom blogger and it's important that your audience gets like that mom voice of understanding, hire a mom who is in the depths of toddlerhood as well. You know, like that kind of thing is very important because you are entrusting that they understand the content and they care about the content as well. So I think those are other tips. Like if you're hiring someone or you're interviewing someone who has no idea what you're talking about, then obviously it's probably not going to be the best fit, but there's so many options out there. And I think if 
you're willing to just do a couple of hours of interviews, you'll find someone that you really love. And it is a time investment up front for the first couple of weeks to get them like situated in your business. Don't let their questions like scare you off thinking like they don't know how to do something. They don't know what they're doing. Just give them time to get settled in. And then you, it's going to be amazing for your business going forward. But of course, that onboarding is always, you know, a process. So absolutely. So two things I want to mention to everyone before we go is one, I'm going to put a link in the show notes for E-Myth Revisited. It's the book by Michael Gerber that I talk about all the time. And it is incredible for, um, as a resource for mapping out processes and procedures, SOPs, and actually even hiring help so that you don't get stuck in the trenches and can be the CEO of your business sooner than later. And then I will also link the episode where we interviewed Casey Ackerman, who is a ClickUp specialist. And since you mentioned ClickUp, mm -hmm. I will put that episode in the links, that link to that episode in the show notes as well. So you guys, if you have not been heading over to read the full show notes, I encourage you to do so because there's just a wealth of information there. And there's always links to other episodes that we've had related to the same topics and, um, you know, different perspectives and things like that. There's always links to the guest as well as to different lead magnets and things that I have. So you can join our email list as well. With all of that said, Helen, where can the listeners connect with you? You so beautifully gave them your email, which is so, so, so gracious and kind, but how else would you like to connect with people? Yeah, I am primarily on Instagram at Peterson virtual assistant. Um, I share like day to day on there, business tips, growth tips, have a bunch of freebies linked in my bio. So you can head over there to learn more and um, yeah, feel free to reach out if you have questions about hiring. I, I love making that connection because it's people I care about getting jobs, you know, so it's, and they're helping you. And like you said, it's just that empowering situation of where you can hire someone to grow in their business as well. Yeah, together we can transform lives and change the tra trajectory of their children's lives, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you so much for being here. This was an, a great conversation. I enjoyed it. And everyone follow up with Helen and we'll see you next time.